We've been waiting for this for a long time. The market has been pricing it and had to come off. And now, basically, you know, the first one is out of the gates. Not surprisingly that it's the S&B in the sense that uh, Switzerland had by far the best inflation record uh, through this difficult period of the pandemic. Uh, so it's, it's a courageous step, but perfectly justifiable when you look at the inflation forecast and the inflation data uh, these last couple of years. So what does a policy mistake look like, not from S&B, but, but also for others? Is there a danger that actually if you cut too quickly, then inflation actually is rampant under control and so it makes your job double harder to, to get on top of that? I think the main challenge they face, all the central banks effectively, and certainly the Fed, is that goods inflation continues to come down. That's the post-pandemic adjustment. That will settle at roughly zero, which is where typically historically goods inflation is. What is not going to happen, in my view, is service inflation is not going to come down. Uh, we have very strong uh, labor markets. Wages are strong. And so my guess is service inflation is going to turn out to be sticky when it settles. And in combination between goods at zero and service inflation somewhere around 3%, let's say, that suggests to me that what we're going to end up with a kind of a rate that is going to be higher. And so I think what you're going to see is a higher for longer story that will ultimately kind of feed through the, uh, you know, the short term adjustment of, of rates now beginning to ease, policy rates beginning to ease. Um, for, for many years, you were, of course, in charge of the SNB. We're now looking at live pictures of Thomas Jordan uh, speaking to, to report. I know that room very well, gathered there to try and understand the path forward. He's also said he will step down. What's the intricacies on, on I guess, the complexities of, of just managing the Swiss economy right now? Well, I think that, you know, just keeping keeping the track record of the SNB having, I mean, the, the legacy of Thomas, of course, is that he has the best inflation track record of any central bank. Uh, and so I think that's the principal uh, challenge going forward to make to make sure that there's no question that that credibility on inflation will be maintained. And then in the longer term, the question will be, and that's partly an SMB question, but more a regulatory question. How do you deal with a bank that is going to be very, very large compared to GDP? Uh, and that's, of course, the, the legacy, in a sense, of the failure of Credit Suisse. So uh, that, those will be the main challenges uh, going forward, I'd say, for his successor. But would he be worried about market reaction right now? So no, I don't think so. I think he's, you know, they, I mean, they've known... How the, the markets they, react they know it. how to surprise markets. They've done that before. As I said, I think he could certainly perfectly justify the decision today. He could have also waited. But in a sense, when you look at the inflation data, the inflation forecast, there's not much point in, in waiting here. So why not go ahead? So I don't anticipate any problems. And if he if he gets a little bit of uh, currency weakness out of this, uh, then I think, you know, that's perfectly fine. So so this uh, will not create any major kind of market reactions, but it does signal to the world that we have kind of turned the corner, that uh, central banks are easing. And then the question will be, where does all this settle in the long term?